if they want us to stop rocking the boat, all they have to do is educate us. And by God, that's cheaper than going through uh, uh, this revolution. And this on racism. The Chicano is finally realizing that, that, that there's nothing uh, exceptionally great about being white or certainly nothing wrong about being white. That, that this illusion in this country that white is best must go. Uh, white people should be white people. Brown people should be brown and black, black. And what's the difference? Bob Navarro, Channel 9 News, reporting. Ruben Salazar, a fine journalist, but uh, 20 years ago, a man with the foresight that uh, we appreciate today. Those words that we just heard, very poignant. And we have other news to report today. A double murderer tried a peace march turned violent. Three people were killed during clashes with police. One of the dead was journalist Ruben Salazar. Cindy Vador joins us now with a story of how he is being remembered tonight. Cindy? Carrie, let me give you some background first. Ruben Salazar was a pioneer who fought to empower Latinos. Words were his weapons. He was a journalist killed covering a Latino demonstration August 29th, 20 years ago. So it's fitting that tonight, here at the L.A. Theater Center in downtown, he's being remembered with a powerful play called August 29th. Many of those in the audience are people who knew Salazar, and we spoke with them earlier. Reporter for the Los Angeles Times. He was at the time he was a columnist for the Times, but he was also news director. He was he was very very uh, experienced. Raúl Ruiz was also an experienced journalist. Twenty years ago today, he was photographing the largest Latino anti-war protest ever. Then he saw L.A. sheriff's deputies tear gassing the Silver Dollar Bar. Inside, a tear gas canister struck and killed Ruben Salazar. Suddenly, Latinos had lost an important voice. People refer to that day and that moment in our community a great, very much like they refer to where were you when Kennedy was shot? You know, in fact, right now around here, people say, you know, on the 29th, you know where I was? There were many memories. It is a moment of history, and among those here commemorating that moment are Salazar's family, his widow, and children. They tell me he would be, he was quite proud to be a journalist, and he would be quite proud to know of the impact he has had on our city and on the Latino community. For more on that, here's Channel 9's Luis Patino. It is 20 years to the day Ruben Salazar walked through this door, never to leave here alive again. But if he could somehow walk back into the video he cared about and wrote about so often, what would he find? What have become of his people, the varios, the issues? Overall, you look at the community as a whole, and you can still see that there's an awful lot of problems. The dropout rate is still appalling. Most, uh, probably the majority of the Latino workers in this city still earn the minimum wage. A lot of them still live in rundown housing. Uh, so there's still an awful lot that needs to be done if you look at the, the aggregate whole of the community. Frank Del Olmo sees the Latino community from the same viewpoint as his mentor, Ruben Salazar. Now deputy editor of the L.A. Times, Olmo feels Salazar, the columnist, would feel somewhat uncomfortable with his role as a martyr and would instead want to help give a better perspective of Chicano life so society could learn to cope with its unique problems. So does he. The immigrant stream has not stopped for us like it stopped for the Italians or the Jews or the Germans or the Japanese Americans. It continues, and that means that the challenge is constantly renewed. It's not, you know, one day you're Mexicans and the next day you're American. This is always, there's always so many millions of people sort of betwixt and between, and that creates a lot of social challenges. Rosemary Soto agrees and feels there's a need to approach those challenges differently. Twenty years ago, she was a college student marching down Whittier Boulevard when Salazar was killed. Today, she too sees many of the same problems in our barrios. Anger still burns inside her. But twenty years later, the legacy of the Chicano movement and the death of Salazar, she says, isn't about heroes or legends. It's about channeling that anger and working together for change. It seems that people have their feet on the ground and they're like saying, hey, you know what, we let it slide, but now we can't let it slide anymore. We're going to have to make a change. How are we going to make that change? By get uniting together and sticking together and stop fighting among ourselves. <laughs> Pride in our past, a realistic look at ourselves now, hard work, hope for the future. Many say this is the real legacy of Ruben Salazar. Luis Patino, Channel 9 News. An interesting note about how far that legacy has spread. Luis Patino, our reporter on that piece, is from El Paso, Texas, the same place that Salazar was from. 
And Luis learned to be a journalist under a scholarship that came through because of Salazar. It's quite a legacy, and we're all quite proud to know both Luis and the people here tonight are going to share many memories about Ruben Salazar. Reporting live from the L.A. Theater Center, I'm Cindy Vandor, Channel 9 News, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Cindy. Thank we certainly are lucky to have Luis. Absolutely. And if you're looking for... One of them was journalist Ruben Salazar, a Mexican-American who worked hard to make a difference in his community. As Kimberly Moreau tells us now, his death is being portrayed in a play at the very place he was killed. The play is called The Silver Dollar, and with good reason. It is being restaged at the Silver Dollar Saloon in East Los Angeles, the very place where Ruben Salazar met with death on August 29, 1970. Ruben Salazar had come to the Silver Dollar to use the telephone and have a beer. He was sitting right here at this very bar 20 years ago to this day when sheriff's deputies fired tear gas through the door. The tear gas projectile ripped through his head. Salazar had stopped in the bar after covering a Mexican-American march against the Vietnam War. He was a powerful man, both a columnist and a reporter, whose words made a difference in a time of turmoil. For performers, acting in the play on this date has special meaning. Being on the 29th, this is a day that he was, uh, I don't know how to put it, he was deceased. And uh, I could feel it in my heart, more or less, that uh, he's with me. The play is a fictitious account of what could have happened inside that little bar before Salazar had stopped by. Rene Rodriguez wrote the play so that Salazar's life and death would not be forgotten. He was a very strong representative of this community, so I felt that he would be a, a very important uh, person to, uh, to focus on. Because this is the day of his death, tonight's play had a different ending, a request that Salazar's spirit be kept alive. In East Los Angeles, Kimberly Moreau, Fox News. And by the way, the play will continue at the Silver Dollar Saloon through this coming weekend. Everyone is welcome. On a journalist and the issues he cared about were remembered. And that is the subject of Larry Atterbury's top story. Larry. 20 years ago, what was it like then? Well, the controversy over the Vietnam War was at its height. And it was beginning of the drive by Hispanics for more recognition, for more power. It was in this kind of setting that Ruben Salazar emerged and was beginning to be recognized. Ruben Salazar was much more than an outspoken journalist. He had become the voice, a real force within the Chicano community. August 29, 1970, a day that started out with the largest anti-Vietnam protest ever held in Los Angeles. The Chicano Moratorium Committee staged the rally at Belvedere Park in East Los Angeles, not only to protest the war, but to call for more help for the Hispanic community. The controversial Brown Berets were there. They claimed to protect Chicano rights, but were often involved in violence. When the rally broke up, several groups of young people headed for the East Los Angeles Sheriff's Station. Fist bites broke out. Rocks and bottles were thrown at the Sheriff's Station. A news cameraman was knocked to the ground. Soon, a full-scale riot was underway. The fighting streamed down Whittier Boulevard. Ruben Salazar and a news photographer from KMEX were covering the riot. Salazar went inside the Silver Dollar. He never came out alive. Authorities claimed they had a report that a man with a gun had gone into that bar. Deputies surrounded it, and tear gas was fired inside. Salazar was hit by a rocket-like tear gas charge he died instantly. A coroner's inquest called it death at the hands of another. Others called it murder. Raul Ruiz was a reporter that day, and he was outside the Silver Dollar. It definitely was a very, very, it was a trauma in our community when we heard that Ruben Salazar had been killed. Ruben, because um, he was a person that was very important, if only because he occupied a very important position within the public media. He was a columnist for Los Angeles Times, he was news director of KMEX, but he was also a person that the community could count on for the first time that would give some type of voice to that community that had never really been uh, given any type of presence. All of a sudden, with Ruben in town, people had a, a place to go that they could bring out issues, and Ruben was, was doing that. And I think this is why Ruben may have raised uh, some concern on the part of some folks in authority that Ruben was, was probably generating too much controversy. Tonight at the Silver Dollar, a special play inside the bar to remember what happened. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I went over the big pond to fight for democracy for this country. And you know all I got out of it? 
A dishonorable discharge and a bunch of beachy Chicanos young The place has a strong symbolism. It's the place where Ruben Salazar was killed. So it's kind of been a very important uh, symbol to the, the Chicano community. And uh, what more appropriate place than to do it where it actually took place. And in downtown Los Angeles, at the Los Angeles Theater Center, another play attended by Ruben's widow. What do you think it's important for us to remember about your husband 20 years after he was killed? He was a great journalist and had great integrity. Have things changed for the Hispanic community in the past 20 years, or are they the same? The moratorium in 1970 was against the war in Vietnam. This is uh, right now we're in the eve of a possible war in the Persian Gulf, and I think so it's very timely. Uh, unfortunately, I think there's correlation in that sense. Uh, there is still a lot of problems, a lot of turmoil in terms of how the art community can uh, adapt or, or, or fit into the general uh, organization of, of, of our city and our state. Still a lot of problems that um, necessarily haven't been dealt with or have any type of, of remedy provided. The struggle for more Hispanic power and recognition is very much in the headlines today. The struggle with the Board of Supervisors for Hispanic District is just one example. It is a fight that Ruben Salazar would have loved. And it was his fight for his community that makes the anniversary of his death significant. That's Top Story. All right, Larry, thanks a lot. We are at the L.A. Theater Center in the midst of a party after the opening of a play called August 29th. It's about a young woman recalling the tragedy in order to regain her pride and commitment to Latino causes. Many of those who were there the day that Salazar died 20 years ago are also here tonight. Very emotional when I found out that he, in fact, had been killed. I said, geez, I was just with the guy. What I saw that day was extremely emotional because what I really saw that day was Hitler and with his SS troopers. Albert Ramirez posted bond to get the marchers out of jail. Raul Ruiz, now a Cal State professor, then was La Raza magazine editor and took these photos of the protest and then the tear gas assault by sheriff's deputies that killed Salazar. His contributions were very timely and definitely very important, and they did advance our cause. Advances have been made. Many Latinos here tonight have attained prominence. They credit Salazar as their intellectual inspiration. Yet 20 years later, their community still suffers the same problems. We're still fighting for the same problems we used to fight 20 years ago. The, the dropout rates is 50%, now used to be 50% 20 years ago. To get into college is more difficult now than it used to be 20 years ago. Uh, you know, police brutality is still a big issue in our community. It used to be a big issue, you know, and 20 years ago. And to solve some of those problems, tonight's performance of the play is a benefit for the Latino Lab Theater, which trains and showcases new works by Latino artists, very much in keeping with the spirit of what Ruben Salazar stood for. Reporting live from downtown, I'm Cindy Vandor, Channel 9 News. Back to you, Jerry and Kate. Cindy, thank you for that. Thanks a bunch. Some Dodger lightning. 1970 was staged to protest the Vietnam War and the poor conditions that existed in the barrios of East L.A. Over 20,000 Chicanos marched. Up to that time, it was the single largest event of solidarity ever held in East Los Angeles. The march, however, ended in violence, and the death of one man became a symbol for a movement that still lives on today. During the rioting and widespread chaos, three men were killed. One of them was Los Angeles Times columnist Ruben Salazar who also was the news director of KMEX, the Los Angeles Spanish language television station. After the rioting broke out, Salazar and a couple of friends dropped into the Silver Dollar Cafe on Whittier Boulevard for a couple of drinks. To this day, events leading up to his death are not clear. One thing is certain, Salazar was killed instantly by a tear gas projectile fired by a deputy sheriff. Based on reports, sheriff's officials claimed they were after two armed men that had entered the Silver Dollar. Through his columns in the Los Angeles Times, Salazar had become a powerful and influential voice for millions of Mexican-Americans. For many Chicanos like movie director and producer Moctezuma Esparza, Salazar became a symbol. He was someone that was a, a role model for me, for many of us, that went on into journalism and communications and communications and entertainment. An already angry community became incensed over his death. At a coroner's inquest, a deputy sheriff said, he fired the projectile after giving a warning and ordering those inside to come out with 
their hands up. Survivors inside the bar said they did not hear the warning. People in the values are suffering daily on the part of police. Testifying was a young professor of Chicano studies at Cal State Northridge, Raul Reese. His photos of the event gave Salazar's death nationwide attention. You don't want to give up your cushy job at the LA Times. Today, 20 years later, the legacy of Ruben Salazar is the subject of the stage play August 29, now running at the Los Angeles Theater Center. To even get involved with the Chicano community, but the more I experienced, the angrier I got. I began to feel the virulent attitude towards our people. It wasn't happening in some far off corner of the world anymore. They were saying those things about me, about my people in my country. Then I started hitting back. You want to know what happened to the cop that killed you? Nothing. Now he's coming back to ask the same questions we were asking him 20 years ago. Why are you not reporting in the community? Why are you not saying what's happening to our community? Now he's coming back and asking us, what are we doing? To this day, Cal State Northridge professor Raul Reese still believes the death of Ruben Salazar remains unsolved. I believe the issue of the killing of Ruben Salazar is an issue that has not been and should not be forgotten. It was, I believe, a homicide, and I believe it, the case can still be open. I don't think we can just simply sweep this under the rug and say, you know, business as usual.